The Euphrates is one of the world's most significant rivers, running from Turkey through Syria and eventually to Iraq. For over 10,000 years, this lengthy stretch of river has been the primary supply of water in the area. However, this ancient river is now drying up due to terrifying circumstances, plunging millions into an era of unprecedented drought. However, the drying of the Euphrates does not come as a surprise because it was predicted in a terrifying prophecy that appears to be coming true, as strange and ancient discoveries have been discovered beneath the dried riverbed. Revelations that have left the globe in astonishment. It is now proven that the Euphrates River has finally dried up and something dreadful is taking place. Oh my gosh! Is it the truth or myth? Do you want to know about it more deeply? Then follow the unknown facts to know about it. The Euphrates River has a particular position in human history since it is responsible for the formation of the Fertile Crescent, a region of ancient Mesopotamia where the earliest and oldest known agricultural methods originated. The Euphrates River supplied a consistent supply of clean water for mankind to conduct farming and other agricultural methods that eventually spread to other regions of the globe. The Euphrates was also one of the earliest rivers to be documented in the Bible, since it was one of four rivers supposed to have originated in the Garden of Eden in biblical accounts. The Euphrates River functioned as a crucial dividing barrier between east and west, affecting important events such as wars and invasions, which affected the distribution of people and power throughout much of Asia and North Africa. The river's importance dates back over 450,000 years, with Shulman stone artifacts and the bones of early Homo erectus discovered buried in its banks, reaching over 1,730 kilometers from the Armenian highlands in eastern Turkey. The Euphrates is Asia's longest river, and it forms the fertile crescent with the Tigris. The river travels through Turkey's steep gorges and canyons, then across Syria's plains before cutting through Iraq and into the Persian Gulf. However, this historic river is gradually drying up with major drops in water levels over its entire course. Most of the bottom section of the river is a wreck. The river has dried up, exposing the riverbed that was previously hidden underwater. In most regions where the water is dried up, farmlands have turned barren since there is no supply of irrigation for the crops, forcing villages into exceptionally protracted droughts. The fishing economies of these places are now essentially non-existent since whatever little pools of water remain are poisoned or unfit to consume. The once verdant crescent that gave birth to the world's agriculture is now a bleak wasteland that is almost unrecognizable from the previous decade. But the issue is, what caused this once raging river to dry up nearly overnight? What does this signify for people who rely on its waters for survival? Whereas something biblical and nearly inhuman is said to have caused the river to dry up, as well as a slew of bizarre artifacts discovered under the river. Several human activities have contributed to the river's early end. The Euphrates River is important to Turkey's economy. Syria and Iraq use the river's immense resources to sustain agriculture, hydroelectric power facilities, and irrigation water for farming. All three nations have had several battles over the management and use of the Euphrates, with Turkey having the greatest influence over the river's flow since it originates in the Armenian highlands in East Turkey. These three nations' treaties date back to World War I when the boundaries in and surrounding the area were established after the Treaty of Luzerne in 1923. The pact outlined how the Euphrates' three riparian nations would use the water in a manner that would benefit all three countries along the river's length. This includes any future dams or the development of hydraulic infrastructure on the river to produce hydroelectricity. Given the number of dams erected by Turkey, the flow of the Euphrates into Syria would be severely affected, with most of the impact falling on Iraq. Turkey promised to notify any hydrological modifications or constructions on the Euphrates River in 1946, and this agreement was signed. This would enable Iraq to build dams on Turkish territory to regulate the flow of the Euphrates, ensuring that any such structures completed in Turkey have no negative impact on the Iraqi populace. Syria and Turkey were the first to build hydroelectric dams on the Euphrates to fill reservoirs in 1975, just a year apart. Concurrently, the entire Fertile Crescent was hit with severe drought, which, combined with the newly built dams, resulted in a significant reduction in the river's flow to a wreck, a wreck that normally experienced over 15 cubic kilometers of water flow in 1973, but saw a significant reduction to barely 9 cubic kilometers in 1975. This caused a serious issue in Iraq, prompting the country to threaten to bomb. Following a series of talks, 
The Tabaka Dam in Turkey was a primary source of a decrease in the river's flow to Iraq. An agreement was eventually reached between the three nations, and the dams were opened, increasing the flow of the Euphrates down to a wreck. However, this was only the first in a series of crises involving the flow of the Euphrates, with a wreck almost always getting the short end of the stick as dams and reservoirs being built in Turkey and Syria resulted in a reduction of the flow of water down to the Iraqi plains. Following a bilateral deal in 1989, Syria and Iraq seemed to have reached an accord, with Syria agreeing to transfer 60% of the flowing water it received from Turkey. This arrangement lasted for more than 20 years, with no notable dispute between the three countries on water rationing from the Euphrates. This was before Turkey launched the Southeastern Anatolia Project, often known as the Gap. Turkey and Syria have the most dams and hydroelectric power plants on the Euphrates, with Syria having over six significant dams on the Euphrates alone and Turkey having over 22 dams and hydroelectric power plants all along the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. Iraq, on the other hand, has only two big dams on the Euphrates, both of which are in bad condition since they were constructed in the late 1980s and have seen little usage due to the constant decline in water intake from the Syrian end of the Euphrates River. Syria contains the Tabaka Dam, the country's biggest reservoir situated on Lake Assad, with approximately 500,000 hectares of agriculture reliant on the dam for irrigation and drinking water. Both Syria and Turkey have erected minor dams on the Euphrates tributaries and streams, maximizing the river's capacity to the cost of Iraq. The Gap Project was Turkey's attempt to harness the Euphrates River's irrigation and hydroelectricity-generating potential for its southeastern districts. The project covers an area of 80,000 square kilometers and affects over 10 million people. It delivers irrigation water to approximately 1 million hectares of agricultural land in the Euphrates Basin, which accounts for more than 20% of Turkey's irrigable land. The building of the Ataturk Damage section of the Gap Project was a tremendous victory for the Turkish nation, standing almost 600 feet taller, approximately 6,000 feet long, and capable of storing more than 90% of the entire flow of the Euphrates. While all of this is amazing, it means trouble for Syria and ultimate doom for the wreck, realizing the disastrous potential the Gap Project would have on the downstream state. The World Bank originally blocked financing until the three states reached a formal agreement on sharing water from the Euphrates, but this did not prevent the cascading impact of the multiple dams being constructed in Turkey and Syria from ravaging Iraq. Water flows from the Euphrates River have been steadily decreasing over the previous two decades, depriving regions and places that rely on the river for agricultural and drinking water. Turkey started dramatically reducing the flow of the Euphrates into Syria in April of 2014, and by May of that year, the flow had been shut off nearly completely leading the river to end almost entirely at the Turkish-Syrian border. This move by Turkey was clearly in breach of the three countries' original agreement in 1987, in which Turkey pledged to discharge a minimum of 500 cubic meters of water per second over the Syrian border. As a result, the drying of the Euphrates River has had a greater impact on Iraq, which has built an elaborate network of canals linking the Euphrates to various lakes and reservoirs. These reservoirs were used to retain surplus floodwaters from the Euphrates, which were then utilized for irrigation of agriculture and farming. One of the biggest canals was the main outfall drain, also known as the Third River, which was built in Iraq and spans 50,660 kilometers between the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. This canal was an essential feature of the country's internal irrigation network since it provided irrigation water and enabled huge freight boats to transit from the Euphrates and Tigris up to Baghdad. Today, the Third River is almost dry, as satellite photographs indicate that the long stretch of water has nearly evaporated since the dams were closed. The damming of the Euphrates in the Turkish area has had a disastrous effect on the ecosystem of the neighboring riparian nations. When the Euphrates Basin's supply of water vanishes virtually overnight, the repercussions are largely felt in Syria and Iraq, where around 400 villages and communities are affected. The closing of these dams, particularly in Turkey, not only reduces the amount of water flowing through the Euphrates, but also considerably pollutes the water that remains on the riverbed. 
This is because water from Turkey and Syria often includes dissolved fertilizer compounds used on crops, which are subsequently discharged into the Euphrates River, which flows into Iraq and has significantly increased the salinity of the water, rendering it nearly unfit for drinking. However, the ensuing famine that has devastated the whole fertile crescent has been caused not only by dam closures, but also by the development of multiple reservoirs and lakes on the Euphrates. These enormous lakes and reservoirs all have unusually big surface areas and are located in an exceedingly hot environment. This has resulted in an unparalleled surge in evaporation, facilitating the entire loss of water from certain areas. Climate change and rising global surface temperatures have increased surface water evaporation, causing previously afflicted regions to suffer from disastrous droughts. There are differing viewpoints about the present state of the Euphrates. In the Old Testament of the Bible, there are allusions to a prophecy involving the drying up of the Euphrates, which we are witnessing unfold in today's globe. The Euphrates played an important part since it was one of the first rivers to emerge from the Garden of Eden and also served as a source of support for the Israeli army. The ancient Babylonians and Assyrians established their kingdom in what is now known as Mesopotamia, a region bounded on both sides by the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. According to biblical sources, the Euphrates flowed through Babylon, providing food for the city's crops as well as water for the Babylonian inhabitants. The city of Babylon could not have thrived without the Euphrates River, and archaeological records demonstrate that the Babylonians erected constructions along and around the Euphrates. However, just as the Euphrates River functioned as a protective barrier, surrounding the Babylonian Empire, it also played a crucial part in the demise of one of human history's oldest advanced civilizations. However, the Book of Revelations has a terrifying prophecy about the Euphrates drying up. According to Revelation 6.12, the sixth angel emptied his vial into the great river Euphrates, and the water was so tried up so that the road of the kings of the east may be prepared. According to the Book of Revelations, this section of the Bible has a remarkable similarity to what is presently occurring on the Euphrates, where the waters are drying up at a far quicker pace than has ever been recorded in history. During the end times, the sixth angel of God would force the Euphrates to dry up, but it was also revealed that something more frightening might arise from the Euphrates' dry subterranean bed. The sixth angel blew his trumpet, and I heard a voice speak from the four horns of the gold altar, according to Revelation 9, 13-15. This is in God's presence, and the voice stated to the sixth angel, who was holding the trumpet, to liberate the four angels who were tied to the huge Euphrates River. The four angels would then be ready for this hour, day, month, and year, when they were unleashed to murder one-third of all humans on earth. According to the Bible, four fallen angels were bound in chains under the Euphrates River. And when the river starts to dry, the angel of God will release these fallen angels onto the earth to wreak havoc during the days of the apocalypse. Two of them are non-Christians. These may seem to be religious markings. However, several weird things have been noticed on the Euphrates Riverbed, as individuals have ventured into regions of the river that were previously unreachable due to being submerged. People have found caves and caverns with unusual forms that are not typical of any caves that may have been built by man. Some of these caves resemble jail bars made to keep someone or something prisoner, and in addition to these strangely formed caverns, archaeologists and even ordinary people have recorded a variety of horrific noises emanating from the earth. Some have characterized the sounds as moaning and agony that makes your skin crawl and gives you nightmares. People have recorded moans and growls, with some claiming to have heard what sounded like moving chains emanating from under the earth. Religious organizations have justified this as the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. But one big concern remains. If the Euphrates is the fulfillment of prophecy, does this indicate that fallen angels will soon rise to wipe out one-third of humanity? That's all. Do like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, don't forget to comment down below. Thanks for watching.